Hey everybody, John Wagnon here with Dev Central, and we are bringing you another Lightboard lesson video. Today we're going to talk about TLS 1.3. This is the protocol that's used between client and server uh, in encrypted communication on the internet today. Uh, so before we get into the specifics of TLS 1.3, I wanted to highlight a report uh, that was just released by our awesome F5 Labs security research team. Uh, they do all kinds of great security research, threat analysis, that kind of stuff. And uh, they wrote this uh, report, it's called the, uh, the 2017 TLS Telemetry Report. And it goes, uh, it goes over a ton of different security related stuff, but it's of course centered around TLS. And, uh, and it gives you statistics on things like, you know, what versions of TLS SSL are out there in the wild today. Uh, I'll give you a little, a little teaser uh, from the report, and I'll link to it, by the way. But uh, did you know that uh, like 11% of hosts out there in the Internet today still use SSL version 3.0, which in today's day and age, this is 2018, that is like ancient history. That is crazy outdated, insecure stuff. Um, in fact, it's even prohibited by the IETF, SSL 3.0, but 11% of you people out there are still using it. Um, things like TLS 1.2, which is the latest before TLS 1.3, of course, 89% of hosts use uh, TLS 1.2. 81% um, of communications across the internet today are encrypted with HTTPS, with SSL TLS, with something. All right, so it's, it's things like that. Uh, it's a fascinating report. It shows you all kinds of different stuff. So get out there and, uh, and check that out. Um, in light of that, we wanted to talk about this new version, TLS 1.3. TLS 1.2 has been around for a long time, uh, and there is a kind of a philosophical debate, if you will, about whether TLS 1.2 is even broken enough to need to be replaced or not. But nonetheless, the organization, the IETF, the Internet Engineering Task Force, uh, who governs all this stuff, um, released or a, just just recently approved TLS 1.3. All right. So again, the TLS protocol is a protocol, and it and it defines the the way that the client and server on the internet communicate. So I'm going to draw just a very quick representation of the TLS handshake up here, and then we'll use that to kind of talk a little bit today. So you have uh, you have client over here, and then you have server over here, and then you have what is considered or what is called the TLS handshake and that is the way that the client and the server exchange uh, encryption keys to be able to ultimately encrypt all their communication and make it secure. So the client sends a message to the server. Uh, this is a hello message and then the server responds with stuff. This is a very simplified version but basically uh, the server responds with a hello you know plus a lot of stuff and then ultimately, you arrive down here at uh, what we'll call application uh, data. And I'm going to put a little lock on that because that stuff, once you go through this little uh, key exchange and cipher, you know, coordination and agreement and all that stuff, then ultimately you land down here with encrypted application data between client and server. Okay, so one of the critical, uh, or, or there, I guess I should say there are a couple of critical things to talk about with respect to TLS 1.3, and I'm gonna break them into two kind of primary categories, and these are the things that TLS 1.3 brings to us uh, that maybe TLS 1.2 or even uh, previous versions did not have. And the two major categories that I'll, uh, that I'll list up here are performance and security. So here's performance and then uh, security. All right, so on the performance side, as the IETF went through, you know, hey, if we're gonna, if we're gonna create this new protocol, this TLS 1.3, it better be better than the old protocol, of course. And one of the things that they talked about was this performance issue. Uh, and, and we'll go back here quickly to client and server. Whenever the client sends encryption information or key information or cipher and all that kind of stuff over to the server and then the server sends back, they've got to chunk through all this stuff and they got to, they got to uh, calculate encryption keys and it just it gets kind of clunky and, and computationally expensive as it were. And uh, so, um, the ITF said, hey, we need, to, we need to make sure that that's as fast as we can possibly make it. 
um, for, especially in today's day and age, for things like uh, mobile phone experiences. I mean, every one of us, it seems like, has a mobile phone, and to ask our little, you know, mobile phone to do all these complex calculations gets a little crazy sometimes. So, uh, so with that in mind, what they wanted to do is have a shorter, and I'm just going to put this up, up here, shorter handshake. All right, so what used to be a fairly sophisticated back and forth between the client and the server, client, hello, it offers up cipher suites, the server would send back a certificate, you know, and say this is the cipher suite that I, you know, uh, uh, agreed to, and then each of them have to calculate the keys, and then they send these chain cipher spec messages uh, back and forth, and then they have to encrypt certain things, and then they finally land down here at application data. But it was a, it was a bunch of back and forth. Now there is a much shorter handshake that happens. It's basically the client says, "Hey, hello, server," sends uh, some bits and pieces of information. The server gets that, sends all of the pieces of information it needs to send. And then they just start encrypting stuff. So it's a much quicker flow through the handshake process. All right, so shorter handshake. Uh, the other one that I'll put up here is I'm going to put a zero and then RTT. That's zero round trip time. And that actually goes back to the shorter handshake. And this is in a session resumption situation. So imagine if a client has already established communications with a server. They've already established a, a session. Um, they've already got the session key and it's, in, and it's encrypted and or the communication is encrypted, all that stuff. Um, let's say, for example, that client uh, does what it needs to do on that web server and then it's, uh, you know, the session it get, is, is now no longer valid. Um, then if that client comes back to the server and says, hey, you know, I was shopping on your website or whatever. Now I'm not shopping for a minute. Now I'm coming back. I want to shop again kind of thing. So, uh, so now it needs to establish another secure communication with that server. The idea behind zero round trip time is that the client can say, hey server, do you remember me? I was here a little while ago. We did this whole shopping experience and I gave you the encryption capability or the encryption keys and all that stuff. Why don't we reuse some of that stuff and, uh, and let's make this whole, you know, um, and encryption uh, handshake thing go much, much faster than it would need it, would have needed to in previous versions of TLS. So basically, the client can say, server, hello, I'm going to send you some little bits of information um, that you might need to resume the session that we had before. And then I'm going to go ahead and send like my first get request or my first bit of, hey, let me access your website. And, uh, and then the server, when it gets that, it can say, oh yeah, I remember that guy, I remember that client. So let me just, let me calculate the encryption keys that would need to be calculated. And let me respond to the get request and let's just go ahead and start doing this thing. So basically there's not even a complete round trip that needs to happen. So the client can send some of its application requests uh, with its initial hello, as it were, in this session resumption. All right. The, the bottom line on all this is that the, uh, the, the handshaking between the client and the server is significantly reduced now. So uh, what that equates to then, if you're a mobile user or if you have a desktop or laptop, whatever, um, then when you go to access a web page, the web page is going to respond much quicker than it used to if it did not use TLS 1.3. So Theoretically, as we move forward and as more and more web servers and more and more clients adopt TLS 1.3, then, uh, then you will start to see faster response times on web pages, which everybody loves that, right? One interesting thing about the zero round trip time that I will mention, though, is it is susceptible to what we call a replay attack. And that is if you have a man in the middle or an or a attacker bad guy that can actually grab some of the client information and hold on to that, then... As then, then that attacker could impersonate the client and say, hey, server, um, here's another get request or here's another request to your web application. Then the server theoretically could then respond back to that, what would be an attacker replaying that client request. Uh, and then, you know, and it could, it could serve up the web page that would have been request, requested. Um, that, you know, for some examples, that's maybe not such a big deal. Uh, if you're transferring data, or I'm sorry, not transferring data, if you're transferring money from your bank account, 
or if you're deleting a database entry, or you're, I mean, you can, you can imagine that could be a problem, of course. So the IETF actually uh, addresses this in the, in the write-up of the RFC for TLS 1.3, and they essentially say that it's up to the server ultimately to be configured properly to deal with this problem. So server, if you get a replay attack, you need to be configured properly in order to handle that uh, properly. So if you're a server, a web server administrator, or you, you're a web developer or that kind of thing, then design your web applications in such a way that you are not susceptible to replay attacks. That's what the IETF <coughs> would tell you. That's what they are going to tell you and have told you in this uh, write-up. Okay, so performance increased with TLS 1.3. Um, from a security perspective, there are several things uh, to note. I'm going to put uh, old, old ciphers. Goodness, that's not good penmanship. Ciphers uh, removed, all right? And so basically anything that they considered, they being the ITF, considered legacy or um, ciphers that have been problematic in, you know, from a historical perspective that have been susceptible to attacks or that kind of thing, those have been removed to now, of course, favor newer cipher sets and cipher strings uh, that are stronger and not susceptible to attacks. Uh, with that, there's this thing called AEAD ciphers, and every cipher set now that's approved for TLS 1.3 is AEAD ciphers. Uh, stay tuned, by the way, we're going to do a, another light board on AEAD ciphers, like what does that even mean? What are those things? So uh, we'll give you a little teaser there. Stay tuned, we'll, we'll do one of those. Um, there is uh, also messages uh, are encrypted after the server hello comes back from the server, everything after that. So I'm going to put, I'm going to put server hello plus uh, encrypted. Encrypted. All right. So basically what I'm saying there is everything after the server hello is encrypted in the TLS handshake. Like I said, there's a bunch of stuff here that I did not include. Um, key exchange information and some of that kind of stuff uh, that used to not have to be encrypted. Now it is going to be encrypted if, uh, as, as you use TLS uh, 1.3. All right, there is, a, uh, uh, there is a version, I'll say version negotiation. Version negotiation. And basically uh, what this, and actually I'm gonna put version negotiation removed. What you used to be able to do is negotiate what version of TLS or SSL that you wanted to use between client and server. Uh, so, you know, hey, client says, hey, server, here's my Cypher suites that I want to offer up. I'm saying, hello, I want to use TLS version 1.2 or 1.1 or whatever it is. Uh, and so you would have this, this method of negotiating what version of TLS that you would want to use. Um, what this opened up, though, is a susceptibility to a down, what we call a downgrade attack. Uh, if you guys remember the, uh, the Poodle attack, that's basically what this would do. It would say, hey, I am gonna step in, me being attacker bad guy, I'm gonna step in and force the server to downgrade uh, to SSL 3.0, which by the way, if you listened earlier, 11% of you people are still using that based on our TLS telemetry report. So for 11% of you, we don't even have to make you downgrade. But nonetheless, it's an attack where you would say, hey, server, let's downgrade to a lower or more vulnerable version of SSL. And then the server would do that. Um, and then that would open up a lot of possibilities then for the attacker to you know, attack and hack into your system and just all that kind of stuff. All right, so with version negotiation removed now, then, uh, then there is, it basically makes that a more secure um, interaction between client and server. So, uh, so anyway, so that is also out. And then the final thing that I'll put up here, it's three big letters, PFS, perfect forward secrecy is what that is. We have a light board on that as well. This is probably one of the most important things of TLS 1.3, and that is that uh, perfect forward secrecy now um, is required for this whole handshake thing, which basically means um, if, that, that like the RSA version of key exchange, that whole thing is not going to be able to be used anymore. Uh, one of the significant byproducts of that is whenever you used to use RSA, or, or I, obviously a lot of people still do it today, um, 
but in an RSA implementation, you, you would have a private key on the server, and then you have a public key that the server would, would serve out, of course, but that private key would stay static. And what that allowed you to do is you could say, hey, if I've got you know, clients coming into my web application, and I want to send them to like a data loss prevention you know, mechanism, or maybe I want to send them to an intrusion detection or intrusion prevention you know, mechanism to kind of check things out before they ever get to my uh, web application, then you could share, you could still encrypt that entire thing between client and server, but you could share your private key from your server out to those trusted places like an IPS or IDS or whatever, uh, and then that 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 service or that you know that feature could take the encrypted client data. It could decrypt it with the private key. It could check it all out. If everything's good, it sends it on back to your web application. Well, now with Perfect Forward Secrecy, you cannot do that. You cannot share the private key out with all these different people because there is a there is a new and unique private key for every single session between client and server. So. Uh, uh, we, uh, we actually have a light board on Perfect Forward Secrecy, so we can link to that as well. Uh, but you need to understand that, 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 that this creates a very interesting uh, problem that we collectively are going to need to, to start to figure out and solve. So, uh, so anyway, so that is one of the key elements of TLS 1.3. Perfect Forward um, ciphers are required now. All right, so... That's a few things on TLS 1.3. It's, it's an exciting thing. I mean, it's got some really cool new features to it. Uh, like I said, from a performance standpoint, from a security standpoint, we are making steps forward. Um, but it's, it's got some things that we need to be aware of, like perfect forward secret uh, ciphers are, um, are going to be required now. So, all right. So whether, whether you like it or not, honestly, this is the way that the world is moving and clients are going to start to adopt TLS 1.3, um, you know, from a browser perspective, and web servers are going to start to adopt this as well. So this is the way the world is moving. Let's understand it. Let's get on board with it. And, uh, and then some of those issues that we need to work out, let's, uh, let's get creative and, and let's, uh, let's pull our, our heads together and, and figure those out as well. So thanks for uh, hanging out with us today to watch this Lightboard lesson video on TLS 1.3. Hey, if you like this, you can click on the DC ball here and uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and we will see you guys out there in the community.